Hi sugar beasties, Janine here from That's Cakeable and in this week's tutorial I'm going to talk all about structure. So structure is absolutely imperative to any slightly differently shaped or sized cakes and in this tutorial I'm going to break it down and show you how to create a structure for a very tall skinny cake that will last the distance and make sure that you can travel with your cake safely without it toppling over. While I've got you here, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel by hitting that button just down below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell too because then you'll be informed every time I upload a new video. Okay, so time to move on to this little morsel that is cake structure for a long tall cake. I'll stop rambling, let's get onto it. So to build my structure, I'm taking a 10 millimeter thick eight inch round MDF board, a three millimeter thick six inch round MDF board, a five millimeter thick four inch foam core board covered in foil tape and a standard five inch round cake card. Now I'm drilling a hole through my 10 millimeter thick eight inch board and the drill bit I'm using is coinciding with the same size as the dowel that I'll be using. I do the same through the foam core board and then the same through the cake card. Now I do wriggle it around a bit just to give me some room to move it on the dowel if it's not perfectly straight. Clean them off and they're ready to use. Now what I have to do is attach the six millimeter board to the eight millimeter board and I'm using this dowel now what I've done is I've measured the dowel to the height of the cake and it won't poke through the top of the cake because we have to allow for it sinking into that board. I hot glue the six millimeter board on the base of the eight millimeter board, flip it over, and then I add some hot glue into that central hole that we've drilled. Just make sure that your drill bit is around the same size as the dowel so it fits nice and snug. I'm using a ruler to make sure that it's nice and straight so the cake is straight also. Also, if there's any hot glue excess around the base there, make sure you get rid of it. Otherwise, it'll mess with how level the cake is. Now I'm taking some aluminium foil tape and I'm just wrapping that central dowel to make sure it's nice and food safe. And I pop a little bit on the base also. Now it's ready to start stacking our cake. Oh, but before I do that, I'm just popping the five inch cake board over to make sure it fits nicely, which it does. So I'm using some ganache here, just some white chocolate ganache, and I'm putting it directly onto the board. And then I'm taking my five inch cake card with the hole in the center and popping that right over the top and that ganache will secure it to the base. A little more ganache on that board. Now it's time to start stacking up the cake. So I'm using a five inch round cake that I've split into one inch layers. And I just get the first layer around about central on that dowel and slide it on down. Then I fill it with some ganache and do the same with the next layer. And I do that until I've reached six layers high, which is about as high as I wanna go before I start risking the integrity of the structure. So now what I wanna do is put a support in the center so that none of our cake on top collapses. So what I'm using here is just some plain old drinking straws and popping them down into the cake. I'm using four drinking straws, making sure they're nice and level. And then inside the drinking straws, I'm adding some skewers just for a little bit of extra stable structure. You can never have enough. Remember always to tell your clients how your cake is structured if you've got structuring materials inside your cake. Now we can continue to stack, but before we put any more cake on, I put a layer of ganache, then I put my four inch foam core board, which of course is smaller than the actual cake, a bit more ganache, and then I can continue stacking the rest of the cake until it is a whopping 11 inches high. That's right, five inch round cake, 11 inches high. She's tall, she's skinny, but she's well structured and going nowhere.
Now I chill that just a little bit before I go ahead and I do my obligatory crumb coat with some nice gray chocolate ganache. Of course, you could use buttercream if you wanted to. And then after the crumb coat's had a moment to chill, I bring it back and I start adding a good ganache coat. Making sure it's spread nice and thickly to begin with. And then I'm using my Pro Froster to go around and scrape off the excess. I continue building up layers of ganache and smoothing it out with my Pro Froster. Filling in all of those little divots to make sure it's nice and smooth. Now you want to make sure that if you are making a cake this tall and this skinny that the sides are perfectly straight up and down and the top is really level. With tall thin cakes you're going to notice if they're leaning to one side and if the top is off kilter. So you want to make sure it's nice and straight. Going ahead, filling in some more of those little divots there until it's as smooth as can be. I'm also using a stainless steel scraper to make sure it's nice and smooth. Especially on the top, I sort of pushed my Pro Froster to the limit. It was on the highest setting possible and wasn't exactly catching the top like I wanted it to. Once the top's level, I just scrape around and leave a little bit of a lip at the top there. Then I pop that in the freezer for about 10 minutes and I've got a flat blade here that I've dipped in boiling hot water and I just go around and cut off the excess on the top for a nice, smooth, sharp finish. And there we go. Please excuse the state of my t-shirt. Um, yeah, I should have worn an apron. Now I've made chocolate sales for you guys before, but I'll quickly run through it again. I've just got some melted white chocolate that I've tinted with some pink gel food coloring and I've popped it on a Teflon sheet here and then I'm dropping it over the top of a bottle. I did end up switching to baking paper, but a Teflon sheet or baking paper will work. And then I just peg the corners to make it into a nice little cup. Once that's all chilled, I take it off the bottle, remove the pegs, flip it upside down and very carefully remove that baking paper. If you can hear my dog in the background, I do apologize. Now the fun and very messy part. I'm taking some edible paint here on a brush and just splashing black edible paint all over the cake. Yes, you will make a giant mess, I promise. Now I'm switching it up with some white edible art paint and doing exactly the same thing with a small paintbrush, flicking it all over the cake and all over my studio. And last but not least, to tie in the pink theme, I'm taking some more of the melted pink chocolate with a slightly larger brush and doing the same. And this by far was the messiest splash of all. Once I'd cleaned all that up, I popped a little bit more melted chocolate on the top and placed my chocolate sale right on there. Look at the state of my t-shirt. Oh my goodness. And there you go, guys. That's how you create a structure for a long, thin cake that will last the test of time. As I said, structure is really important, so put the work in at the beginning and you will not regret it in the end. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me again this week. It has been a blast as usual. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, like I said at the top, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell while you're there because then you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Well, I've shown you how it's done so you can go off and make gorgeous, tall, skinny cakes for yourself now. That's right. Go and get your cake on and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.